So I saw a lot of darkness. Okay. Going into church, it was like all of that can be left behind you. Yeah. And all you have to do is accept Jesus. And it was like, why would I not? And so I did that. And then it was like, welcome. And now we have five billion rules yeah. that you must memorize mm -hmm. and follow lest you go to hell. Uh, do you want to talk, if you're interested, if you want to, um, about your sort of life in terms of the religion in Pentecostalism? Or, or should we move on to a different, no, different topic? No, I'm totally open talking about okay, it. How much okay. time do you have? <laughs> I got all day. I mean, it's, it's, we're hanging out on a Saturday. It's 4 11. We're only like one drink in, you know? Because there's, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Let's do it. There's a lot to unpack. Let's do it. Whatever you want to talk about, you know? Yeah. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah, the, the Christian aspect of it was really interesting because in the beginning, it felt like. Okay, I'm 14. My family was really crazy. Um, I mean, insane crazy. Like, mm. batshit crazy. Mm. Like, you wouldn't believe me if I told you stories crazy. Um, now you've got my interest. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we don't need to go there, but... Like, yeah. we were friends with meth heads and meth dealers crazy. Okay. You know, like, that was like my uncle was this yeah. meth head, and he wasn't related to me at all by blood. It was like a yeah. whole thing. And yeah. he okay. was sleeping with my teacher. My teacher was selling meth to students and it was a whole thing. Sounds like a real so breaking like, bad setup kind of there. Was, yeah. It was a whole thing. Yeah. And, um, so when I encountered the church, it felt like really amazing to have answers to mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and to have these rules by which to live by, because like for 14 years, I had no rules. And like, that's not to say that my parents didn't discipline me or like keep me safe, um, but the chaos of the world was just too much. Like, and there was just too much pain that I saw that I didn't necessarily suffer. Um, and I had a very privileged life in terms of like, I wasn't hurt by the people around me that okay. very well could have hurt me. Like the alcoholics, the drug addicts, yeah, the... Yeah creepy guys that probably shouldn't have been around yes. you yeah. know like i wasn't hurt by those people but everyone around me was so i saw a lot of darkness okay. and i saw a lot of like just disgusting like horrible awful things happen to people mm -hmm. and um going into church it was like all of that can be left behind you yeah. and all you have to do is accept Jesus into your heart. Mm -hmm. And it was like, done. That is so easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, why would I not? And so I did that. And then it was like, welcome. And now we have 5 billion rules that you must memorize and follow lest you go to hell. And it was like, okay, well, I can do that. And then it was like this insidious, like you work really hard and you're like trying to follow the rules. And I call it a cult because it's Pentecostal yeah. and it felt like a cult. Mm -hmm. Like it was brainwashing. And this idea that when you walk in, you're accepted. But when you're in, you have to be so emotionally broken down for them to build you up from scratch. In their image, of course, so then yes. you are pliant and under their control. Exactly. And so there was this mantra of like, you are not good enough. Mm -hmm. You are bad. You are evil. Your desires of your heart will lead you to hell and Satan himself. Like the thoughts you have that are like, maybe I like girls, which was very much my experience. Mm -hmm. I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. And that thought was like from the devil. It wasn't a real thought that I had. And so it was like completely stripping away everything about yourself, which is really damaging to a 14 year old girl to be like, you are inherently evil, which is what we were told. Like you were inherently bad. You were born bad. You were born under sin. And that was told to you every day. And then you start to believe it. You start to believe like, well, my will and my desires are bad. So therefore I must rely on God. And then came the prophets, which were normal people like you and me, but they had a word from God. And 
from God. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you put that in <laughs> they would tell you essentially what to do. Like they would pick you out of a crowd. It would be like, they would play worship music. So you're crying and you're like emotionally distraught and like you, you're bad and you know you're bad and you've sinned because you thought about having sex and you're 15 and your hormones are at an all time high. So of course you thought about sex and like you disobeyed your parents and because parents are infallible. You know, like in this religion, parents do no yeah. wrong, even though they're people and will do wrong. And so you're like sobbing and then this prophet will come on stage and like pick you out of the crowd and bring you up on stage and lay his hands on your head and be like, you are called by God to do something mighty. And then you just feel like, oh my God, like God has chosen me. And he's like, yes. And then I remember this distinctly because this happened to me where it's like, some people are called to go to a big school. It's not you. Mm -hmm. You need to go to a small school. Mm -hmm. And the school that they were affiliated with was Sagu, which is where I went. Mm -hmm. And of course he told me to go to Sagu because they were affiliated. I was going to say, they've got, they're going to have their people there Sagu. to keep you on the, belt, on the, on the pipeline. Exactly. Yeah, to keep you in the pipeline. So yeah. of course they would go. And then they would, another prophet told me, um, Payne, I just want to talk to you. And I was like, okay. And he was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a word from God. It's going to be so good. And he was like, you've seen some darkness. And I was like, fair enough. And he was like, and now there's like bright, like goodness in your future, but, um, you'll get everything you ever wanted. You'll have a lovely life. And then the enemy is going to take it all from you. He's going to kill your husband. Mm -hmm. Your children will disappear. Like they will die. And you will be tested in your faith at that time. And you will um, have to turn back to God. And I was like, what? Yeah, right. And you're like, that's an awfully specific prediction <laughs> to me as like an 18 year old. Is that just the story of yeah. Job? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's just a Bible yeah, story. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh my God. Yeah. And it's still to this day that haunts me. Even though I am deconstructed from Christianity, I yeah. no longer consider myself a Christian. Mm -hmm. I consider myself agnostic. You're taught that these prophets speak the absolute truth yeah. of God. Like it is not their thoughts. It is God speaking through them. And so it's like this all powerful being giving you this thing and that's really hard to shake after like 10 years in the faith. Yeah. Do you, do you feel, and, and this is again, observing this as an outsider, having, I was always sort of, again, brought up in a, not like I was ever like militantly atheist or anything, but just sort of very much, as I said, ideologically agnostic, culturally Judeo-Christian right. is what I would say is what you're describing sounds like very much you know, basically a cult, like a, a Christian mm -hmm. sub cult. And my question is, did, was your feeling that when you were talking to people who were again, who were Catholic, who were like Protestants, but the branches that are, let's imagine, hopefully more chill, like th there was a much wider range in terms of their views on things. Or did you find like, no, actually there were certain thematic through lines that they were spouting that Maybe they were less extreme, but they were still what I was encountering. Like, like I could see where that road led. Or was it like, no, this was like a different thing. And I was like, kind of, a no, they're definitely thematic through lines. And I think one of them that I see posted a lot is this idea of umbrellas, which I don't know if you've ever heard of this idea of umbrellas. You have Christ, you have your husband, you have your wife mm -hmm. and you have your children and yeah. under each umbrella is a domain and the wife does not go to Christ. The husband goes mm -hmm. to Christ and gets word from God and gives it to his wife. And that is the biblical order of things. And I see a lot of churches preaching that. And I, th and I think that is like very much a cult mentality mm -hmm. of like, you have one guy, that like can commune with God as a woman, you cannot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very controlling 
And I think that that is really scary. And that is like everywhere in all churches I've encountered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I think the Pentecostal sect itself had some very cult like things in specific, like a church was its cult. Like you would take your word of your pastor over the word of someone else who's equally qualified yeah, because sure. that's your pastor. Yeah. And so you idolize this one guy and you follow this one guy and this one guy has the power to give you blessings. And this one guy has the power over your life to be like, I think you should stay with your abusive husband mm -hmm. and you would stay with your abusive mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. uh, like, or he would talk to young girls about their sex lives and that was okay. Yeah. You know, like that was like, yes, that is your elder and you follow him and he, so I think in that aspect, it Pentecostal specifically was very cult-like yeah. in itself. I think there are themes that stretch over to other other branches, branches of, Christi of Christianity, Christianity yeah. that I think are harmful um, and that I think are misogynistic, mm -hmm. um, but they they're not. I I haven't seen them as cult as as, as yeah and you know sort of it's like, like the, worshiping this rock star pastor. Yeah, you yeah. see it a lot with mega churches where it's like the deeper you get into a mega church, the more cult like it becomes. Like I had a friend who was really.